Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is like one of the first of the three part series I'm trying to build on Kubernetes. Let's get started with the first part on this video and we'll continue the rest in the later videos. Personally, as a data engineer, I work across building scalable pipelines. So Kubernetes actually comes to the rescue in that sense. Like you can build different modules and just run them in parallel, like a big cluster, which is very useful for deploying pipelines with big jobs. For example, if I have a job which processes the data for like a f like four or five hours and I want to parallelize that four or five hours across like a different data set, like 10 data sets, the same four or five hour job, uh, what I can do is just uh, deploy that kind of job and scale it using a Kubernetes pod. So I can just like parallelize whole operation uh, using a Kubernetes pod and run it in parallel, which is very useful. As a part of the introduction, I will try to introduce uh, different concepts around Kubernetes deployment. So Kubernetes is just a software which allows us to deploy, manage and scale applications. The applications are actually packed in containers and Kubernetes group them into units. It allows us to span our application over thousands of servers while just like looking at one single unit. It basically abstracts all the complexity for any user and it's just work as a whole container system, which is like a cluster. So Kubernetes is meant to work for microservice architecture and it's now have become a standard across uh, different cloud providers like AWS, Google, etc. Uh, before we move on to deploying application using Kubernetes, let's uh, just go through like a few concepts. What is a container? A container is like a standardized unit of software considered as a disk image. So the disk image has uh, all the software, the code and all the dependencies included and it just works and it works like anywhere in Mac, Windows, Linux, Ubuntu, etc. So you can see like an image, which is like an analogy of a Docker container. So it basically is a full package container that can be pulled out of the ship, uh, put it into a train, then pulled back into a truck and delivered anywhere if we want to. So the next concept is the microservice architecture. Uh, you clearly see in the image, the comparison between like a monolithic application and like a microservice uh, based application. Uh, a microservice based application is di divided into like a smaller sets of code, the smaller sets of independent uh, packaged code. So instead of like putting uh, everything into a single uh, app, you are dividing the whole application into small bits and pieces. You can uh, easily see on the right hand side where uh, all of these microservices are interacting with each other, interacting with databases and the UI as well, compared to the monolithic application where just there is like a UI layer, a business logic and a data access layer which is connected to the data. So the next question is why Kubernetes? Kubernetes is like providing a 15 years of Google's experience of running production workloads at scale. So the main goal is to ease the deployment, scaling and maintenance. That's the idea. So Kubernetes also provides a framework which helps you to run distributed systems resiliently. It takes care of scaling failover for your applications and provides deployment patterns and more. With modern web services, users expect the applications to run 24 seven. That's where Kubernetes cluster comes in. Uh, it helps you planet scale the application with the limited sets of DevOps team. So you, uh, when the application grows, uh, you don't have to hire a lot of people in the DevOps team to uh, scale this across the planet. As the second part of this tutorial, we're going to discuss the key concepts around Kubernetes. So a Kubernetes cluster is like a highly coordinated like set of VMs or like set of physical computers that work as a connected single unit. That's the idea. So the way it's abstracted, it's trying to work as a single unit for us, the one who is like trying to deploy the application there. So consider mul uh, multiple computers working together as a single unit. When you use like a a Kubernetes command, which is essentially a kubectl command. Kubernetes has like abstracted everything else for us for the deployment. So we don't have to specify where we want to deploy, which, which specific node we want to deploy. Uh, it's been managed by Kubernetes. We are just passing a command and it's providing us an abstraction and internally it, it decides uh, where to deploy that specific application or where to deploy that specific part. So the abstraction in the Kubernetes allows you to deploy containerized applications to cluster without specifying it to individual machines. So Kubernetes automates this distribution and scheduling of application across all the containers. And uh, how it happens, it's usually uh, using the master node. So basically there's like one master node which has uh, the Kubernetes code and it's trying to manage everything from there. The, the other set of worker nodes are being managed from 
the master node. So that's the idea. If you see the Kubernetes cluster diagram here, I'm just gonna uh, enlarge it. It clearly shows that there's a master node and there's a, like a three set of worker nodes. Each node will have a set of software called Kubelet and Docker. Basically, uh, the way master interacts is using Kubelet to other worker nodes. Let's discuss key concept inside like Kubernetes cluster. So let's start with node. Node uh, is a actual VM or a physical computer which is inside the machine, uh, which is inside the Kubernetes cluster. So the node communicates with the master using the Kubernetes API. So when you use kubectl to deploy the apps, you're usually uh, talking to the whole cluster as a whole and master communicates this message to a specific node or a VM and it's just managing internally. The other is like the container runtime, which is essentially Docker, which we are using here. So the next concept is deployment. So basically at the end of the day, uh, you're using the Kubernetes cluster to, to deploy application. So basically you can see a deployment is just like a small configuration where you're providing the information that poop deploy this specific application to this cluster and Kubernetes internally manage this and deploys the application in the nodes. So once the application instances are created, Kubernetes deployment controller continuously monitors those instances. If the node hosting sometimes go down or get deleted, the deployment controller replaces the instance. So like all of your deployment are basically being tied to a deployment uh, and the deployment controller is just like managing everything. Even if like the internal node gets deleted, uh, the deployment remain as is because the Kubernetes cluster like pops up another node or a pod and makes the application works again. So the next concept is pod. A pod is like an atomic unit to the Kubernetes platform. It's more of a comparison to an atom to the universe. So whenever you create a deployment in a Kubernetes application, the deployment internally creates a pod inside the Kubernetes cluster. So this pod is an abstraction which has been deployed to a Kubernetes node. So the Kubernetes uh, pod contains a container runtime where the container image has been deployed. So if you can consider pod as a logical abstraction of multiple applications which work together. So there are like different examples you can see in the image. So like there is a one pod which has just a single application. Then the pod two has like an application and a DB. The pod three has like two applications and a DB. So basically consider this application as a Docker image. So two Docker containers running with a database container running. The pod contains like a logical set of application which work together. A node as we discussed can have multiple pods. So you can see in the image, uh, this is like a single node and it already has like four pods being deployed. So if you'll see a system cube kubelet which interacts with the master node and it has a container runtime called Docker and it has like three different pods which internally have different containerized applications with their databases and volumes. So that's the key concept around how Kubernetes work. The last concept is the service. Uh, by default, a pod is only accessed by an internal IP address within a cluster. So the pods are not communicating with the outside world. They can only interact with the uh, internal other pods or different applications. To make a container accessible outside the Kubernetes environment, you usually have to expose it using a Kubernetes service. The Kubernetes service provides an outlet and you can easily interact with any application inside a Kubernetes cluster. So they work as a service. Hence the microservice architecture comes in. So you're deploying multiple services on the Kubernetes cluster and these services can interact with uh, the public IPs and etc. Let's move on to the next part. The next part of the tutorial is actually building and deploying an application on a Kubernetes cluster, actually a local Kubernetes cluster Minikube. So we are using Minikube. The requirement is basically we want to set up a dev environment. So hence we are trying to use Minikube to replicate that. So if you'll see, uh, usually a Kubernetes cluster uh, looks like this, where a lot of machines like VMs are working in sync without us managing anything. So in production, it, it usually looks like this, where there are like number of machines and you can scale up to any number of nodes, n number of nodes, which is quite easy to do. However, you would want to develop uh, the application locally and try to build it locally, right? Hence comes Minikube, which 
helps you to replicate this Kubernetes environment and deploy a single VM and deploy Kubernetes on top of it, then run your app. So Minikube is like a tool that makes it easy to run Kubernetes locally. Minikube runs on a single node. Kubernetes clustered inside a virtual machine and on your like mach local machine like laptop, etc. So it's going to help you to develop application day to day with Kubernetes. The next part, we'll try to install Minikube and try to run an application like a sample application from kubernetes.org. To install Minikube, you first need to install VirtualBox. VirtualBox is actually going to create a VM locally on your machine. So let's just uh, click on the link. I'm going to add uh, the link in the description as well if for you guys. Now I've clicked on the link. I'm routed to, to the VirtualBox app. So like for Windows, you have to download the corresponding. Uh, I'm using OS X, so I'm going to download the OS X host for VirtualBox and install. So let's just wait. All right. Now we already have VirtualBox installed. I'm going to double click on that and try to install the DMG file locally. Uh, in Windows, it's going to be similar. It's going to be an exe file. You just have to double click and install VirtualBox on your host. Once you have downloaded VirtualBox, you just need to proceed with the installation by double clicking on the package and uh, just move ahead with the installation. Once it's installed, you can just go to the viewfinder or the spotlight search in Mac or just uh, your Windows application tab and search for VirtualBox. Uh, you'll see an icon and just double click on that just to check if everything is installed correctly. As a next step, you have to install the Minikube in your local. For both of the use cases, I'll leave the link. For Mac, it's quite easy. You just need Homebrew to install. So I'm going to follow the same step on my local computer. Click Brew. So I'm just going to copy, paste and install. So it's, this is going to install Minikube on my local machine. And let's just wait. OK, now Minikube has been installed on my local. The next thing which I have to do is actually start the Minikube instance using VirtualBox driver. So basically Minikube is uh, at the end using a uh, external VM which we are creating using VirtualBox. So hence we are passing a driver uh, VirtualBox in the Minikube start. It's just as easy as just Minikube start with VirtualBox. So let's just start. The next step would be to start Minikube. I'm just going to copy and paste in my terminal and just run this command. Uh, we're going to call the start and with the driver VirtualBox, which we already have installed. So just copy and paste in your terminal and run the command. Uh, it's going to take some time for it to initialize uh, at the first. So let's just wait. All right. Uh, we were able to start the Minikube locally, uh, as you can see on my terminal. Now the Minikube has already started. If you want to close it, you can just do Minikube delete. Uh, or like if you want to stop it, you can do Minikube stop. Then you can do Minikube delete to remove the whole VM from a machine. To check if everything installed correctly, if the Kubernetes is available for you to develop. So just uh, type in Minikube dashboard. This is going to open up a Kubernetes dashboard for you to verify for whatever has been installed. It's going to give you the details on like parts, services and everything deployed. So like it's going to give you all the workloads like cron job, deployments, jobs, pods, etc. So you can view all of these here. Also, one more thing, there's like a namespace. You can use different namespaces or create a new namespace of your own. I usually work with dev namespaces when I want to use different credentials. I think this is it with the Minikube installation. The next uh, would be uh, around deploying an actual application. For this, we are going to deploy a sample WordPress application with MySQL. So the idea is in the Kubernetes uh, environment, we're going to deploy two services. One service is uh, MySQL and the other service is uh, the WordPress uh, app. So the WordPress app will interact with the MySQL instance. And then we're deploying two pods uh, in the Kubernetes cluster, which are interacting with each other. In the next part, the part four of the tutorial, we're actually going to deploy a uh, full application on the local Kubernetes cluster for you to use. Let's just get started with it. So we're going to uh, deploy a WordPress app with MySQL instance with persistent volume. To proceed, I usually use a code editor with that. Uh, you could use anything like Notepad++ or Sublime Text. I prefer Visual Studio Code and I just prefer opening up a folder area. So I created a new folder called deployment and I just opened up that in Visual Studio Code. The next thing I'm going to do is add the configuration files uh, for deploying this application on my local cluster. 
as a gist i'm going to share two main deployments which are going to happen one is the mysql deployment and the next one is the wordpress deployment uh within the deployment uh, a service has been created and the service actually renders a pod inside of the kubernetes cluster which is the atomic unit of kubernetes the mysql instance is basically using a persistent volume uh which is here and this can be shared between applications the usage is like it persists over time even if the pod shuts down the volume will persist uh within the cluster so to keep the data as is the last part is like this file customization.yaml file this is basically just passing your password through this that's the only part so what i'm going to do i'm going to recreate all these file in a folder called k8 under my project so go back to your project create a new folder called k8 within this folder create a new file uh, for the customization.yaml so i'm going to call it the same thing right now going to keep it as is nothing more so the password i'm going to keep it as is and just list this one which i did by mistake and the next thing is add two other configuration file one is for mysql and one is for uh, the wordpress instance so let's just go with the mysql file i'll briefly try to explain what's happening here there's uh, like a service uh, which is being deployed and uh, there's a persistent volume which is being used by the wordpress instance and uh, there is like a deployment which is happening so there's like three parts to it so the first thing which happens is actually the deployment the mysql instance is being deployed using a docker image so if you'll go down here it's you're going to see like in specs and containers you'll see an image attribute the image attribute is actually pointing it to the actual docker image so we're using mysql 5.6 this is going to pull it from the docker repository and deploy it here so with the image you need to pass in the password which we are passing through the customization.yaml file there's other basic parameters like ports with like the default port for mysql the next is actual the volume mount being used and the volumes being being created so we are actually creating a volume up here in this one as a persistent volume claim and the next part is when we create a deployment we attach this um, persisted volume claim to the deployment of mysql and when once the mysql deployment is created we actually create the last layer which is the service using this so this is the actual service which is being created and uses the deployment the idea of the service is you're trying to expose this application uh within the cluster to be used so even if the pod gets deleted or restarted the service will be there as is and you'll have a specific endpoints even if you multiply the pods inside or the pods get shut down or restarted uh it's going to remain the same so let me just create a new file mysql deployment.yaml file inside the k8 folder just copy all the contents i'll just delete this part this is not useful similarly create a new deployment and service for wordpress so the next part is actually creating the wordpress deployment it's quite similar to the mysql deployment uh, back there in wordpress deployment you are just taking an image like uh, wordpress 4.8 apache image from docker repository so it's going to be under spec and container uh with that image you're passing a few environment variables like a uh, db host this is the actual uh, database url which the wordpress is going to call with the db password so the uh, how the wordpress is going to communicate is using this value because if you'll see the uh, the service name for mysql is actually wordpress mysql that's how it's going to communicate directly apart from that it's passing the port uh, like the default at port for wordpress and the persistent storage it's quite similar to the mysql deployment uh, like after the deployment there's like a persistent persistent storage and there is like the actual service deployment and i think that's it what i'm going to do i'm just going to copy and uh, paste it under my k8 folder uh, so like all of this source uh, would be available as a medium article so you can refer that easily as a next step um, you're going to deploy these configuration on a kubernetes cluster so you're going to deploy 
your WordPress instance and the MySQL instance uh, as a separate parts and services on a Kubernetes cluster. So to do that, you're going to use the kubectl create command. The way to achieve this is pass in the folder which has all the configurations. So I'll just go to the terminal and run the command. As a next step, I'm going to take this command and run it on the terminal, passing the K8 folder. All right, uh, our deployments have been created. As you can see, the secret file, the services and the persistent volume with the deployment have been pushed on the Kubernetes cluster on Minikube locally. So to verify that, you need to go to the Minikube dashboard and just verify. As you can see, uh, everything is running. So you can see my pods have the WordPress and the MySQL pods being running up. Uh, the end uh, usage is actually the services. We're going to use the services and call the services to access the data. Uh, I think the WordPress instance is still in progress. So I'll just check out the logs and go back to pods and check if the WordPress instance is running. Okay, I think everything should be running. So let me go back to services and try to access this. As a next step, I'm going to check the pods which are running uh, via terminal just to verify. All right, uh, both the pods are running, the WordPress pod and the MySQL pod. The next step is to get the services for WordPress. Is kubectl get the service? So the external IP is still pending because it's like a local cluster on Kubernetes. To access that, you, you need to use minikube service uh, URL command. So just go ahead and uh, type in that command. All right, you'll get a URL which you can directly access as a WordPress instance, which is very convenient. So the idea is uh, on a proper Kubernetes cluster, uh, all the services are actually up, uh, exposed using a public IP. The the cloud providers actually uh, does like do that in house, but in our case, because we are uh, have the cluster locally, we just uh, we are just exposing it for ourselves to just use. Go to the URL and just hit the URL. Oh, perfect! Now the WordPress is actually running. If you can see. Uh, we already are at the setup stage for WordPress and just let's just click continue and follow the steps. This is going to be my test site and the username would be root. I'll keep the password password for simple. Yeah, I'll just confirm whatever and click on install WordPress. I need to provide an email. I'll confirm the use of the weak password and click on install WordPress. All right, I think everything is running up on our Kubernetes cluster. If you can go back to the dashboard and just view once more what's happening. So we confirm if everything is running. I can just proceed further with this by logging in uh, with root password and try to log in. Meanwhile, I'm just gonna check uh, my existing Kubernetes dashboard. All of them like seems to be running properly. I think then we're good to go because our uh, WordPress site is actually running and um, locally and on our Kubernetes cluster. Uh, as a next step, like when you want to delete the services and delete uh, all of the configurations from your local, you just go back to the terminal and instead of the create command, you put down the delete command and it's going to remove all the pods and services from your Kubernetes instance. So this is going to proceed like within a couple of minutes and let's just wait. Oh yeah, I think it's done already. And that's about it on part four. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you guys liked it. Just before I finish the video, I just wanted to discuss what's coming up next as the next two part of the series. The second part would be focused on a case study where we're trying to discover how other companies like Booking.com, Pinterest are trying to leverage this microservice based architecture on Kubernetes. And the third one would be building a full blown microservice application, like an architecture based application and deploying it on a cloud Kubernetes cluster, preferably Google Cloud. So stay tuned for that. Uh, more is going to come next. And thank you.